What's up you beautiful chuds? Welcome to the Let's Talk Horror channel where in this video I'm going to be reviewing a movie that I could not wait to finally get to get a chance to sit down and watch which I did last night. Of course I'm talking about the Substance. The Substance was released this year in 2024. In this, we follow an aging star is informed of an underground black market market sort of thing. Uh, substance that creates a physical younger alternate you. Uh, although not the same in looks, they are the same in mind. Something they both need to remember to make this work. Now, this film is directed by somebody's name I'm going to butcher, so I apologise. Uh, Coralie Farge, uh, they previously uh, directed a movie called Revenge, which is another movie that I really enjoyed. Um, it's a great, fantastic looking movie. Uh, it's starring the legendary Demi Moore, uh, Margaret Qualley and Dennis Quaid, and of course, a lot of other cast in as well. But they are the main stars of this movie that you're on this journey with. And what an absolutely insane journey it is. Now, if you have watched my reviews or know of my reviews you'll know that they are probably some of the most in-depth and most honest that you will get uh, on wherever you're watching this probably YouTube but they are incredibly in-depth but they also do have spoilers because I honestly want to try and get out everything I can about how I feel about this movie and to to do that I have to sort of talk about it all and remember that this is my opinion it is not yours and doesn't have to be yours so if you agree or completely disagree with me well, that's absolutely fine. That's, a, that's the point in it. This is me just expressing how I feel about this movie and how I do that. I go through the pros, I go through the cons, and at the end, I give you an overall sort of outlook of how I feel about the substance. So let's get right into the pros. So one of the big pros for the movie for me personally is one of the biggest, if not the biggest for me, and that is that the filmmaking in this by Coralie uh, Farge is absolutely stunning. We are taking on an absolute technical treat with the substance. It, this film feels like if Kubrick had, uh, you know, fucked Cronenberg and then a baby movie came out. That's how this feels. It's got that sort of old school feel to it but yet it's brought into this modern era and I really appreciate that but on a technical level on a filmmaking level everything is purposeful everything is meticulous and I absolutely love how this this movie looks how colors are used I mean it almost feels like a computer game sometimes and it's so hyper stylized but yet it then still has these these moments where you I sort of bra but brought a bit back down to sort of earth out of sort of the stylizedness and then it goes full on back to what it is trying to be and, and it's so apparent in what it's trying to be on a technical level and I really appreciate that. So the filmmaking in this is absolutely uh, phenomenal and what I mean by purposeful uh, is that that everything about this is done for a reason. I can imagine that the process of filmmaking this was an absolute nightmare. I'm sure it was an absolute joy, but I'm sure it was a nightmare because every shot feels so set up, so meticulous. Sometimes so much is going on in a shot that it must have been so difficult to film. I love the fact that this movie is, and another pro to this movie, is that this film is unapologetically what it is. I love the fact that it's so weird and in its weirdness, it is so creative and so unique. And I love the fact that I, I laughed at this movie a lot. And then sometimes I was laughing at points where I was like, should I be really laughing at this? And then I was like, actually, well, it's a film, it's fine. But I was laughing a lot more than what I would thought I would do in this movie. As usual, trailers, when you watch them, they always end up setting up movies to be something that when you sit down and watch it, uh, it, it's not. And this movie, I think the trailers went definitely a lot heavy on the fact that it was more horror than what the movie itself is uh, or what the, the message it's trying to get out within this movie. But it's it's weirder than what I thought it was going to be, which is great. But also it's a lot funnier than what I thought it was going to be. So and honestly, I was laughing out loud uh, quite a few moments. Obviously, one of the other standouts, as well as it on a technical level, uh, is the performances. Uh, everybody's great in this. Dennis Quaid is so fucking mental in this, and I'm sure that he absolutely loved it. I'm sure when he read what he was going to do and when he was on set doing this, he probably absolutely loved it. Maybe not the bits with the shrimp and those gross bits that are properly... I mean, they make you feel sick, but 
it's supposed to, right? That's the point of it. It's, it's all purposeful. But Dennis Quaid is great in this. Uh, Margaret Quaid is, is absolutely fantastic as well within the scenes that she needs to be. I feel that she is definitely uh, great at depicting the character and the person that she is supposed to be in this. But obviously, really, the star of this is always going to be Demi Moore. Um, she is absolutely fantastic in this. Um, the performance itself is obviously an incredibly brave performance. Uh, it is taking a look at, you know, these ageing stars, so to speak. Uh, like I mentioned, you know, it's it's about an ageing star who's still trying to stay relevant, who's still trying to, uh, you know, stay within the spotlight, so to speak. But as she's getting older and it's pushing her out and there's a lot of anger behind that. And you can see that throughout Demi Moore. It's not just the need to stay relevant. It's also the anger uh, that you can see behind her that, that she has to. That, that just because, you know, she's ageing a bit and they're trying to push her out to get somebody younger. The fact that that is something that happens and obviously this, you know, this is real, you know, and, and it does happen. The fact that it does happen, uh, you can see that anger. You can see that resentment in her performance as well. And she's absolutely fantastic. Her performance is incredibly bold. And, you know, as usual, uh, and I'm sure I'll talk about it at the end as well, it's going to be absolutely criminal knowing that more than likely... Uh, her performance and everybody's performance in this is going to be overlooked so you know you've got great performances driving it you've got it to, uh, driving it on a technical level as well all pros um yeah I laughed a lot um and what I love about this obviously as well and I did mention it as well is that how it feels sort of very old school you get a bit nostalgic as well uh, and I mentioned obviously Cronenberg as well um that the practical effects in this are absolutely fantastic and um, as a true fan of of horror and body horror and the artistry you know I'm always in awe still to this day when I watch the movies that we got you know in the 80s and the 90s you know when practical effects were used constantly and they were constantly trying to find different ways to do this and to do that but they were doing it for real and they were putting this artistry on screen it's great when we get a movie in 2024 that's doing that and the substance does that in a massive, massive way. If you love old school practical effects, you will love this movie. But it's all, once again, it's still all purposeful. There's meaning behind it. Um, but at the same time, I do enjoy uh, the fact that you can clearly see that they are using practical and visual CGI effects to uh, to merge together sort of what they can or what they are doing in the movie. But it's expertly done. It's done at a high level that you don't really notice so much. So when you look at this in regards to prose as a complete, it, it, it's got a lot of really, really fantastic things going for it. But obviously, with me being as honest as I possibly can be, I'm always going to be, you know, uh, looking at everything in this movie. So here is some cons uh, that I have for The Substance. So the first thing I'm going to be talking about that I, I don't necessarily like too much is how much nudity there is in this movie. Now, there are going to be a lot of people out there that are going to completely disagree with me. And um, there are obviously I understand the reasons for it, you know, but it gets to a point where it's almost shoving it in your face to say, isn't this what you want? Uh, you know, or saying it to the industry, isn't this what you make us do? You know, and it's over sex. I mean, this film is incredibly sexualized, but it's over sexualized. And in fact, I am actually uh, proud is the wrong word, but I'm very appreciative that it didn't go down the route of having sex scenes and multiple sex scenes and so on, because it didn't need it because it was already very over sexualized. Um, and they're, they're obviously doing this on purpose. This, mil this movie has a message and the message is clear and there's multiple layers to the messages that it's putting out. But for me personally, there was too much nudity. And, and the problem is, is when you do these like sex scenes and so on like that, you're taken away from the urgency uh, or anything where you're trying to get from here to there and you sort of take it away because you're too busy going well that person uh, is completely absolutely starkers doing this over here doing this over there I, I, don't, I don't know I, I just felt that you didn't need that much but I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people out there that disagree with me whether it's because they're pervs or, or the fact that 
uh, you know, there's a meaning and there's an understanding as to why they're putting it out there. I get it. But I just didn't think that it necessarily needed to have that because uh, we could have then moved along a little bit more with the story or the film didn't necessarily have to be as long as it was. And that is obviously one of my other cons is that I don't mind watching movies that are two, two plus hours long or whatever, or even longer, but I don't think we need them. And we're at this point now in horror, which is weird because obviously horror notoriously have always been, you know, like 80, 90 minute movies. And then now we're starting to get, you know, in the last few years or so, we're getting, you know, so many of these movies that are now two hour plus. And if they are constant, you know, like something like Terrifier 3, for example, you know, you're with this part of the story, but then you move on to what Art the Clown does and so on, back and forth, back and forth. It, you constantly, you know, your interest is constantly peaked because something is going to be happening and then the time flies by. Now, with the substance, time does fly by because you are very interested in, in finding out where this journey is going to go and where how it's going to end. But I do necessarily think that I, I don't necessarily think that it needed to be the two hours and 20 minutes that it is. So uh, for me, that's another con. I think there is a lot of things like so much of the nudity or little things that they they could have taken out or taken out to put certain other things uh, in. And that's one of my other uh, cons with the movies that I would have liked to have. I would have really liked to have spent a little bit more time. I'm not saying loads, but I would like to have spent a little bit more time with Demi Moore uh, finding like the positive side to what she has done and what she's created. And, you know, with all this substance, you know, because it feels like she takes it. And then she already almost feels like it's immediate within the movie that she has this resentment, this hate, hatred towards this sort of younger self. You know, we, we know that obviously it's not Demi Moore. It doesn't look like Demi Moore, but it is still her mind and her going about, you know, essentially trying to live Demi Moore's life in the way that, you know, ultimately the movie is about that Demi Moore, Moore wanted to lead the life that she wanted to. Um, but it, but it all sort of, you know, throughout the movie gets worse and worse because obviously they're supposed to be the same person, but it turns out that it, that it doesn't work like that, or it doesn't work the way that they wanted to, or what Demi Moore wanted. That, how we get there is absolutely fine, but I would like to have spent a little bit more time with a more positive Demi Moore of, of spending a little bit more time of going oh okay well like this is the good part of doing this but it never felt like it felt like there was just the spiral was almost instant of going i i wish i hadn't done this i regret it i have resentment towards uh you know this this uh sue which is also uh, it's not a con at all i should have put this in the prom but uh, the pros because um once again the, what i love about the weirdness of the movie is the fact that her name she just calls herself sue and it's such a like a random name to have, uh, to, you know, it just it just comes out. And when she says it, you're like, oh, OK, like Sue, there we go. Um, but but I just felt like we needed to spend a little bit more time with a more positive Demi Moore for then it has more of an impact on, um, you know, when she starts going, start raving bonkers because of this other her um, treating her the way that she is. And uh, obviously, you know. That's not a nice thing that sort of happens throughout the movie. Um, but like I said, you know, it, you could have taken out moments of the nudity or moments of, of other things to add those moments in. And then it really would have felt more rounded for me, you know. But once again, uh, this is this is this is just me. Uh, and then one of the other cons I sort of had was that I, as much as I love this movie on a technical level, uh, one of the things that really sort of threw me off uh, is um, there's they have the fight scene between Elizabeth and, and Sue and and um, I didn't like there were moments of it like I like how far it goes how violent it goes because then it shows you you know the practical effect side of how incredible that is but they have a scene where like they're having the fight scene and she kicks her and she goes into a table and just that the way that that was shot the way that it was it just felt so otherworldly so out of it um, that it felt like a computer game and I didn't like that. So it's only a small comp, but the problem is, is like moments like that, they do start taking you out of what this is. This is not, you know, a film set in realism, but the the message, the layers to what it is, is, and the point that it's trying to get across is, but then obviously everything else is, is so unrealistic and so on like that. So 
that's a moment for me that sort of took me out of it. That although, like you know, the scenes itself are really you know uh, energetic and uh, and they're you know unrelenting and so on. There are moments within the movie where you're like, that might be a bit too far. And the way that it was filmed, you know, the way she flies back, it was like a Marvel movie, so to speak. And I, I didn't appreciate that side of it. Um, but yeah, you know, there are cons to this movie, but I'm always going to find things that I don't necessarily like uh, about a movie. And they're not nitty gritty moments, you know, like there are things that when I watch a movie there are always going to be things that I like there's going to be things that I don't like and that's the point of doing these reviews is sort of really expressing it all uh, but obviously in the end I have to give you sort of my overall opinion on the substance so going into the substance obviously the talk of the town is this movie uh you know there's a lot of hype around this movie uh, out there and sometimes that can be a hindrance and I was really worried about that going into the movie because sometimes it gets so overhyped that I honestly get really let down and like I always say the way that I view movies um, sometimes is different to a lot of other people because of you know acting and filmmaking that style of it you know I have a lot of tick boxes that go on my head uh, and I unfortunately can't just sit down and enjoy a movie for what it is um, there are a lot of layers that I have to go through and process to to truly figure out how I feel about the movie. And sometimes all the hype doesn't help. But the good news, and as you can tell with this review, is that the hype is real and it deserves to be there because I absolutely loved the substance. When I was going through my pros and cons, you could tell, uh, you know, the, 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 the pros of it are the things that are the driving force of any movie and if you don't have those then movies fall apart my cons are a little bit you shouldn't have had this and so on like that but when you've walk in you know, when you have a movie that has incredible filmmaking incredible cinematography like this this film is such a beautifully made movie but yet it's talking about uh, some not so nice things and on a technical level, it's absolutely fantastic. And it's a movie that I can't wait to see again because they're already, you know, when I was first watching it, like I already mentioned at the start, it's very Kubrick with a lot of things that almost feel like it's a homage to The Shining, like the bathrooms where there's a lot of red in the bathrooms and the carpet in the hallway that you see so often feels very The Shining, very Kubrick. You've got a lot of references quite clearly to Cronenberg with the body horror side of it and how, uh, how this sort of monstrosity at the end comes comes about um and and I love where this movie goes and like I've already mentioned one of the things is I love movies one of my favorite things in movies is unpredictability which is so important and this film is pretty unpredictable you sort of see where it's going to go straight away I was like okay you know this isn't going to go the way that Demi Moore planned there's going to be a lot of jealousy and resentment that you can see but it's about how it gets to those moments that's the unpredictable element that I really like. But what I love is when movies are unapologetically them. Like they are unapologeti unapologetically what they are. They, they, they are a movie set out to be designed and created and made and performed the way that they want to. And that is what I love. We don't get that enough, you know, in movies. Like a lot of the time movies end up having to filter themselves. Or say, oh, OK, well, maybe that's a little bit too weird or a little bit too far. This movie doesn't do that. This movie, as I said, on a technical level is very weird. Uh, the, the script and, and the, uh, the terminology of how they say things and so on is weird. And I love it. The performances are absolutely uh, fantastic and off kilter. And they, it doesn't some so many moments. It doesn't necessarily feel like what real people are like. And sometimes that's down to how it's filmed and how it's performed. But I love that. This movie is unapologetically what it is. And it is also unapologetic in what it's trying to say. And I love that. I'm not going to go into the millions of different layers and what this movie really is trying to say about uh, about Hollywood and how it's a business and how it treats uh, and, and is sexualising women and always sort of has and still continues to do that. 
and the anger behind that. And there's so much to really truly say mm. uh, about what this, what the message of this movie is. But for me, as somebody that is just trying to sit there and watch this movie mm. on a technical level, and then just going back to the basics of this film looks great. It's performed brilliant. The script is really fun. The way that it's performed, you know, like every single thing about this movie works. There's just the odd thing, like, for example, it didn't necessarily need to be as long. There was probably too much nudity and, and so on like that. But overall, this movie is a very layered movie. It's a very, um, I would say, important movie in regards to putting out uh, a message that doesn't hide it. It wears it, uh, you know, out there for everyone to see. And it's not apologetic whatsoever this movie is what it is and I think that that's one of the big reasons why people are really enjoying the movie because it does feel different you know so many movies we watch especially at the moment feel so similar and they follow the same sort of route and example and this is outside the box and it's cool that when films like this, that, like I say, are also still very reminiscent of old school movies. You know, like I said, Kubrick, Cronenberg. It's a bit like uh, things like uh, Reanimator. That's what it sort of reminds me of as well. Like things like that, like old school sort of movies like that. Um, you know, and, and The Fly, you know. And, and when I was watching this, I kept on thinking of moments like Brundlefly and stuff like that. And obviously, you know, the green stuff that's a bit like, you know, that's obviously Reanimator slash the ooze from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, you know, like there's so much to this and there's so much to like, there's so much to enjoy. And I really, truly enjoyed it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see where we get to at the end of the year and whether it's going to be my favourite movie of the year at the moment in my head. As, as much as there has been a lot of movies that I have truly enjoyed this year, I think there's really two sort of standout ones at the moment. Um, but there are still some movies that I'm yet to see until the uh, till the year end. So mm. we'll see where the substance is by the end of it. But for right now, uh, I'm very excited about watching it again. Uh, I'm very excited about seeing if there's extra things that you can pick up because the filmmaking is so fantastic in this that you feel like on your next viewing there might be another homage, another reference that you didn't see the first time. Or I just enjoy spending my time seeing how fucking brilliant Demi Moore is in this movie. I don't think, to be fair, I spoke enough about how good Demi Moore is in this movie. And like I did mention, it is really sad knowing that because this horror, this is a horror movie or the style of movie that it is, um, it's not gonna be accepted awards-wise because we know that it never does. In fact, I have heard that they are trying to put this into the, you know, in your consideration for the Oscars, but they're going to try and it might end up being in the musical and comedy bracket. And that just, that's not a service to what the movie is. You know, like that's not fair on what it is because it is essentially, you know, really like a bot, you know, a horror movie, a body horror movie, that it's not going to be represented in the way that it should do. And that's bullshit. And the industry needs to fucking change because of that. Because as we know, if it's not these shitty Marvel superhero movies that are making the money for, for cinema, well, what else is doing it? Horror. That's what it does. It's what it's always done. And now you've got all these horrors coming out that are way less budget than the superhero movies. But yet they're making so much more than what their, bu their budget was. They're making profit. They are making bank. But yet the cinema industry, the Oscars, the award ceremonies, anything like that, still don't take recognition for these movies that are created. For me personally, way more technically crafted, way more, you know, the performances are way more important to the movie, but also the performances are, are so varied in horror as well. And and, and just, it, it really does suck that more than likely this movie won't get what it would, what it deserves. And, uh, and that sucks because the industry, um, very much similar to the messages uh, that this movie is trying to put out, the industry's fucked. Um, in many different ways and in many different layers. So, uh, as I said, if you haven't seen, well, I would hope you haven't watched this review, but if you have seen The Substance, obviously feel free to let me know in the comments what you thought. As I said, you don't have to agree with me. If you do agree with me, good. If you don't, good. It's the way that it is. Uh, but I truly love The Substance. 
and uh, and go and watch it if you haven't. And uh, and if you have, then uh, I hope you love it as much as I do. Uh, until next time, stay creepy, fuckers. <laughs>